Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures, and I have done a number of tutorials on this channel on Gaia GPS. And I also teach classes on Gaia GPS at events like Rendezvous in the Ozarks and the recent Moore Expo in Springfield, Missouri that happened just a couple weeks ago. And I thought it might be helpful if I showed the entirety of that class that I taught a couple weeks ago at the Moore Expo. The content is very similar to the other tutorials, but I thought it might be helpful to hear some of the questions that people ask because I figure it's probably some of the same questions that you have. So that's the purpose of this video. It's the entire class that I taught with dialogue and all the questions and everything. I apologize, the sound's not fantastic because of the room that we're in, but uh, I, I think you can uh, hear everything on it. So if you've got any questions about Gaia, put them in the comments shoot me a message on, on Facebook at Ozark Overland Adventures. I hope you find this helpful. Well, thank y'all so much for braving the cold to get here at 9 a.m. Uh, this is this some of the coldest weather I have personally ever experienced. Well, we don't get this very much in Arkansas. Uh, but this right. is the class for Gaia GPS. Count the next and my plan is to run through this much. for about 30 minutes and then give you time for questions. Uh, let me do this. If you would start here, just put your name down. Gaia, every time I do these classes, Gaia is always super kind to send some swag for me to give away. Uh, they start to get really, they used to send me like a crap ton of shirts and hats. Now they're getting cheap on the shirts and hats. Uh, so I've got one hat, a large and an extra large shirt, five patches, but they're now sending me a lot of one year Oh, all right. So I appreciate that. So big thanks to God. No, just saying. What we'll do at the end is I'll have my wife pick random numbers and I'll just count down and that's how we pick the winners of the swag. Um, so I want to cover four things. I want to give a quick overview of just the interface for Gaia, both on the uh, web browser and uh, a tablet, which will be the same for your phone. Uh, and should be the same for iOS and Android. Uh, and so I want to go over interface real quick. I want to cover the layers, because that to me is the most powerful aspect of Guide GPS is the layers. I want to show you how to just real quickly knock out a route to pre-plan, and then show you how to download maps. So those are the four key areas that I want to cover. Uh, and then hopefully you knock that out in about 25 minutes, and then give you time for questions. Uh, we've got to be out of here at 9.50. That way the next class at 10 can have time for their presenter to come in and stuff like that. So, anyway, let's uh, let's dig in. So this is the web browser for Guy GPS. And they have, if you guys have watched my, you know, I didn't know what, I'm Matt McClellan, by the way. Um, I have a little YouTube channel called Make Up Real Adventures. Um, and Love doing that, but my passion for doing this kind of came out of necessity. Uh, if any of y'all live in the Ozarks in Arkansas, few of you have. If you have, you know, the Ozarks are not easy to navigate. Uh, the trail says there's a lot of closed trails, there's very little signage. It's just not easy. And I got really tired of seeing people driving closed trails seeing people putting trails at risk of being closed and just all that sort of stuff. So, I don't know, two years ago, I started making videos on how to navigate the Ozarks. That grew into, you know, then just talking about Gaia. Um, I'm not paid by Gaia in any way. Uh, I am a Gaia affiliate, which means if you click on one of the links in my video and sign up for a membership, I get like an argument. <laughs> so, <laughs> woo! Yeah. Okay, must be recounted. <laughs> um, make sure you guys are passing that sign up to your mouth too. Yeah. But uh, that's that's how I came a, a part of doing this. And then at 11 o'clock today, I'm talking about motor vehicle use maps and trail preservation. So uh, it kind of came out of necessity of just me getting frustrated and being passionate about the Ozarks and keeping trails open and teaching people how to stay on legal trails. It's how all this came about. So um, I'm going to try to flip around in here, but the Ozarks are, I know the Ozarks like the back of my hand and I can zip around on the map. So most of what I talk about will be in the Ozark National Forest, but everything will apply no matter what area you're in. 
Um, so the interface, Gaia, if you've watched my Gaia videos, Gaia has actually changed the interface on their web router, and I love it. They are trying to match the mobile device and the web browser experience, although because they do different things, there is some necessary differences. But they're doing a very good job. So let me walk you through the interface real quick on the web browser. The main area of uh, where you do things is right over here uh, in this little sidebar. Uh, at the top, you've got your overlays. This is where you can, in one big chunk, turn on what you want to put in there. Right now, I have everything off. If I go in here and turn on waypoints, routes, tracks, uh, those are the only, things, those are the only three things I use. Uh, if I'm still connected to my hot spot, there we go. It's popular. There we go. Uh, anyway, here is where I can toggle those very quickly on and off. If I am kind of pre-planning and studying an area, uh, I will first start with the tracks that I have. As you can see, I've covered a whole lot of the Ozarks, but there's little pockets of trails that I have never been on before. Um, that's usually how I'll start with this and go, okay, where have I never been before? Or where have I been before? And then I'll just go in and to kind of get a clean slate, I'll turn everything on. So that's where you do that. And that's everything on or everything off in those categories. The difference between routes and tracks, routes are what you pre <coughs> So I'm going to show you today how to make a route. Tracks are what you record while you're on the trail. That's the difference. That's how Gaia distinguishes those two. Because uh, for a while I was like, you're the same thing. What? But that's that's how they see it. Routes are pre-planned. What you build in the browser or on your tablet or phone tracks are what you record. Uh, next is your layers tab, and we'll get into detail with this. This is where you turn off all your maps, where you organize them into what's visible and what's not, and all that good stuff. Next, you have your saved items. Uh, make sure you put it to load. This is something that they've added in the last year. They're trying to make it better. Um, this is where you can toggle on and off, get to load, your individual things. So uh, here I can uh, sort it, newest, oldest, um, where? Oh, here we go. My filter. I've got everything selected. I can only toggle routes. I can only toggle tracks. Uh, so let's turn on my routes. Filter it that way. Apply. So here's all my routes. Uh, like here's my, and I can toggle them on and off. But I've already got that one. I did. With us having laggy internet. Uh, you see these little the little eyeball icon there? That's where you turn it on and off. So if you want to just show a few things, I don't know why my laptop populated it's because of the internet access. Um, it might be really far north. No, it's right through here. Remember my routes. But it's just being slow because of the no Wi-Fi. That's we'll just do it. Um, but that's where you do that. Your saved items, preferences. And then here is your create section. So if I want to create a waypoint, I just click on it, and then I can drag it where I want it to go, and then I can name it right here. Right here, I can give it different icons. If it's a you know point of interest, if it's a water crossing, if it's a campsite, um, there's a campsite right there. You know, you could if you found a place you want to mark places for gas, you know, all kinds of things. But that's where you do that in the waypoints in the creation. You want to create a route. One thing I hate is when you create something, everything comes back on. You want to create a route. That's where you do it. I'll show you. I'll show you the route creation up here in the Mark Twain National Forest because uh, I don't have any clutter there. Cancel. And then I still haven't figured out areas. There. Areas mean nothing to me. Uh, See, I just download maps. I don't like doing areas. Well, um, but I use that for moving on that one for a lot of but we just had a general area we uh -huh. And I use that to highlight highlight that area. Just to highlight it? And then I would like to go into it and get more detail. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean it, it's there, and so you can't find a use for it. Yes. 
Uh, just the way I do things, it's kind of worthless to me. Uh, if you want to, if someone has shared a route with you, or if you have found one to download, uh, like maybe you went and downloaded the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail route to the Ozarks, and you have it on your computer or on your phone, uh, this will, they move the import data down here, which I think is great. And with Gaia, if you've got a printer that can print large sheets of paper, you can actually print your maps out if you want to. Uh, the other thing, one thing that's confusing about Gaia is they put some things in two places. So this is where you do most of your stuff, but then there's also this menu up here by your name. And here you also have tracks, routes, areas, waypoints, photos if you've taken them. I don't know why they designate heights, but, and then your maps that you've downloaded. Does anybody else need the sign-in sheet? Has everybody had it? Yeah? Okay. Maybe you want to grab that? Uh, that's my wife care, by the way. Uh, but I like, this is where you can go in and organize <coughs> what you've done. So let's go to uh, my routes. See how long this takes to load. Oh, not bad. So in here, this is just a list of my routes without the map. And you can see uh, here's a little, for my camp Monday night, there's a little route to it. Um, it's, it's private. It's, sync is on to my phone or, or tablets. And then I've, it'll tell you that I've put that in a folder. And one thing that I love about Gaia for organization is that you can group things in folders. Uh, that the layers and the folders aspect to me makes Gaia GPS trump Onyx off-road all day long uh, because you can keep things organized here. So now let's go over here to my folders area. There we go. And so here's my folders. So I've got this trip Monday through Wednesday. I've got all my stuff for Patreon subscribers in here that I share. My you know, Kentucky tracks when I went to Lane Between the Lakes. Uh, all my Colorado campsites are in there. I've got uh, folders for, I've got one big folder for everything in Colorado. Uh, so it helps me keep things organized. And then if I click into one, let's go to, and, and you can put folders within folders. So if I go to like my, this Patreon Trails folder, on. Slowly. So in here, I can scroll down and see I've got tracks in here for Kentucky, Colorado, and Arkansas for some of these Oklahoma. Uh, so I've got tracks for there. But uh, so I've got three folders in my main trails folder, which makes it really easy to go in and on your browser, and I'll show you that here in a minute, or on your tablet or or phone, turn those things on and off. Uh, I don't mind. Yeah. Got a question. Um, with your guide membership, is there a storage limit? Uh, no. For photos, mm -hmm. or folders, you can not that I ever encounter. I don't take I don't take photos in Gaia. I know a lot of people. Some people do, um, but it's super handy to do. I just don't because I'm always out when there's no cell signal and it's got to upload and I get back and I just don't mess with it. Uh, but that is cool that you can do it. The only storage limit is like your phone's capability. Yeah. Um, and I'll talk about that when we're talking about that a little bit. So super handy there. Let me switch over to the mobile interface. And show you the differences. And I am running fully offline on the tablet right now. I've got it in airplane mode. Everything is downloaded. Uh, I'll actually change that when we switch to downloading maps. But right now, I just want to show you that everything does work offline. Um, so on the mobile interface, you can see it looks different, but here's where you toggle your layers on and off. Here's where you add things, so to record your track, waypoints, routes, your pre-planning, download your maps, import a file, is there with a plus sign. Here, if you if you have internet access, because like I said, I, I'm an airplane though right now, here you can, uh, or over here you can search for things, uh, here's where it will pinpoint your location. I don't want to tap it because it will bring us here. 
and then here is pulls out the sub menu, and then here's where you access trip data. So this tells me my elevation and stuff for the trip. Uh, but here's where you find your safe stuff in here. And so here you can see I've got uh, my route for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, which starts over here in the green. It's this blue and then this red. And from here, I can toggle that on and off. I don't care if my screen on my web browser is cluttered with all my stuff. I actually want to see all my stuff when I'm in the web browser. Just That's how I like to plan. This is all personal preference, by the way. Uh, but when I'm on my phone or a tablet, I only want to see what I'm doing at the time. That's just, it, I don't want to get confused by previous trips and stuff. So I am very OCD about making sure all my previous stuff is hidden, except for what I'm currently doing on my tablet. And if I need to turn something on, I can go in here and, and find it. So I can turn on, um, oh, this is mine or not. there's my high water month trail uh, that I did a couple years ago. Um, here's the my pre planning for the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail. So I can turn those off as needed while I'm on the trail. And the fact that I can do that with entire folders. So if you go up here, if you're in the save section and you go up here to folders, you can select what you're looking at. So I have folders selected. If I just want to look at routes, if I want to look at waypoints, I can click those. And so if I, for some reason, don't want to see this particular route to the campsite, let me zoom in here. That green one, I can toggle that on and off. Or I can go back to folders and toggle the whole route on and off. So, Super powerful, and I think this is why the, the fact that Gaia does so much is why a lot of people get overwhelmed with it and just like throw their hands up. It's too much, uh, but it's really powerful. Hey Matt, yeah. Do those folders on your iPad do those sync automatically, or do you have to download each one? They sync automatically. Okay. Yeah. If you looked over, if you saw in the web browser when I was showing you the folders, it said sync on. And as long as that's on, it will automatically stay between the two. Uh, now, if you're recording a track and you're offline, you do need to make sure your Gaia is running, like when you get home or driving on the interstate back when you've got cell signal, for it to then upload those to their cloud. And then when you open your browser when you get home, it will then download them. Uh, if you leave Gaia shut down, it won't be able to upload it. So you gotta, that is one step you have to do. But you don't have to manually download. Why not? Um, so let me. So any questions, real quick, just about the interfaces? No. A, a yes. Quick question: Like when you're going to download uh, to your phone, you know, a certain area you're going to go. Like I'm fortunate enough where I, I live here in town, so we're close to the Ozark National Forest. Uh -huh. So, so can we just can we download a huge chunk of that whole area down there and. Then when we're down there offline on my iPad, you'll pick up all that stuff that's down there. Yep, I'll show you that at the end when we talk about downloading maps. Yep. Um, let's go. Let's see. We did the interface. Let's talk through the layers. And let me switch back over to the PC. Because I love the layers. Let's turn on. There we go. Uh, let me turn my tracks and stuff off. Matt, while you're getting that up, do you know uh, what format? Like, is it uh, WGS or NAD formatting? Of, do you know that? Because I'm a uh, GIS person for my county, and so I'm playing with this as well. But I can upload my information. Like, we have a little small off-road park mm -hmm. in our area. And I was going to upload the maps of their trails, but I've done it all in my RGIS program. But I didn't know if there was going to be a fight between uh, once I put in GP access because I do it in AD 15. To, uh, I don't know. That's I, I don't know about those things. Okay. That you got a lot more knowledge than that. <laughs> I'll just have to play with it. I know GPX and KML. Yeah. You know, what makes those up? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the layers. The um, the great thing about Gaia is the layers. Because you have, if you have the premium subscription, and honestly, 
Guy is kind of worthless without the premium subscription. And it is 100% worth it, 40 bucks a year for that premium subscription. And if you don't have the premium subscription, if you go to one of my videos on YouTube, there's a link and it'll give you 25 to 40% off your first your first year or first five years, depending on how much you purchase in advance. Um, so absolutely worth it. It's it's the it's a game changer. But if you go to the layers tab here, there's so much. Let me walk you through what the options are and what I like to use in different places. And I'll tell you what what my favorite layers are. And this is totally personal preference. Uh, just for my style, you can go back in and customize this to whatever layers you personally like. Uh, but the thing about Gaia is you can stack layers on top of each other. You can change the opacity of them. So you can have one layer that's, you know, maybe you can see 20%, so you can see some things, that way you can see what's underneath it. And that's just pretty darn cool. Uh, so whatever, here is your visible layers. See that right there on the left hand side? And then here is your hidden layers. So this right here is everything that I've got available to me right now. So I've got the motor vehicle use map on top. That should always be on top because that is an overlay. And if you put another thing on top of it, you won't be able to see it. And I'll show you that here in a second. I've got public lands, which this right here is the opacity slider. I've got it turned off. It's there, but I've got it hidden. I've got the, the visibility of it turned off. Um, I've got the shaded relief, which I found about a year ago, and I'll show you why I love it. The USFS Classic. If you are wheeling in national forests, there's really two main maps that I like to use. There's USFS Classic, and there's USFS 2016. Some people think those are official maps, like motor vehicle use maps that show you all the trails. It's not. It is just a topographical map. It does show you like every trail, but a lot of those are actually closed. And I'll show you some of that. Um, and then, depending on where I am, Gaia Topo, for just a general topographic map, it's really powerful. And Gaia has put a lot of work into their Gaia Topo map with campsites and points of interest that you can click on and see information about. And I really, really like it. I, I used to not like it, but within the last six months, I have started using the Gaia Topo a lot. And then I'll keep some form of general street map in here for when I'm outside the National Forest. If I'm driving through a town and I want to see a better view of, their, of the city streets, that sort of thing, I'll keep a, a street map in here. Map box is a really good one. Uh, there's one that's called National Map that I used to use. It's really good. Just dig through them and take a look and find, find the ones that you like the best. Um, anything that you have clicked on recently, um, or kind of some of the most popular ones, they're going to already be pre-populated in the hidden stuff. Um, but if you're looking for a map, like say you've never loaded the motor vehicle use map before, a lot of people have trouble finding that. You go down here to add map layers and click on it. And then that takes you to this submenu. And so you've got one for the United States. You've got a lot of options here. National Park Service maps. You've got Nat Geo maps, which are pretty incredibly detailed. Uh, you've got that national map that I was talking about. You've got other topo maps, the two US Forest Service map. Um, US Forest Service Road this area. I've actually never seen that one. Um, this USGS topo, it's decent. Uh, and then if you're traveling in Canada or Europe or Australia, uh, if you want to see satellite imagery, uh, you can, here's some options here. So far I haven't found any satellite imagery in Gaia that's just like super crisp and clear. Um, so I don't use satellite imagery in Gaia a lot. I'll look at it when I'm pre-planning and use Google for that. Uh, but I don't, the satellite imagery takes up a ton of storage space. So that's why I don't use it on my, my mobile devices. Um, general topo maps here, they're there. Um, you've got 
roadmaps. You got if you're a hunter, you've got hunting overlays that gets crazy detailed by state. So like here's Arkansas elk zones. Here's the Arkansas deer zones. Here's mm -hmm. California big ho big horn <laughs> sheep zones. So if you're a hunter, How about Arkansas bear zone. Yeah, because we have bear season. No. <laughs> um, and then you've got novel stuff if you're a boater. Uh, and then you can actually do custom imports. That's a whole other thing. I've actually, I've actually imported some Google Maps that a friend shared with me. Do not ask me how I did that because I did not remember. Uh, that was a one and done thing, and I don't have a clue. You can. He told me how to do it. Uh, he's he's kind of like you. He knows all the detailed <laughs> stuff, and he's like, "Hey, check these out." Let me have what I did. Uh, but the weather and features overlay is where you find some really cool stuff. <coughs> And in this folder, you have things like air quality, cell uh, coverage for AT&T and all carriers, uh, Sprint, T-Mobile, uh, Verizon. And I'm a, I have on AT&T. I actually use this sometimes because in the Ozarks, there's very little so I can find the hot spot for when there's cell phones. It's fairly accurate, but not, I mean, it props for them for trying. You know, it, it gives you some information. Um, if you're a photographer, um, there's the light, light pollution layer. So you can see where the dark skies are. Um, here's where you found, wow, here's where you find the MVUM layer. What was that layer out there? Just leather and uh, And then they've got mines, mountaineering routes, uh, precipitation forecasts. Some of these are dependent on you having internet access because you can't download the data if you're off grid. Um, but then here's two that you need to, to have, at least here's the public lands overlay, which I'll show you that in a minute, and then the private lands overlay. And then there's a bunch of them. And here's, there's two shaded relief options, and I'll show you why I love it so much. So let's go back, let me talk about these layers that I like so much. So the motor vehicle, the MVUM overlay, that is the legal trails in national forests. So if you're in any national forest, the motor vehicle use map overlay, or MVUM, is an absolute must. Because without that, you don't know if you're on legal trail or not. Unfortunately, it doesn't show you closed trails, but it shows you what's legal. Uh, the public land overlay. So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that on. And so everything in green here is national forest. And you can click on it, and it tells you you're in those are national forest. Uh, which for a lot of us here in the central U.S., all we've got is national forests. And we've got some wildlife refuges, uh, wildlife refuges and stuff. So let's go over here. So you've got green for national forests. You've got this brown. That's the Buffalo River. So that's National Park. And you can see they've done pretty good here. They've actually got uh, some hiking trails nearby. Um, they're doing really good with their info. You've got the purple areas here. Uh, which are recreation areas. And then if we swing way, let's see, we got the pink ones that are Department of Defense. Probably say out of those. Um, if we swing way over here to the west, you've got all these yellow spots. That's BLM land. Uh, BLM land is awesome because you can go all over the place. And this right here also shows, so there's like Canyonlands National Park. All this yellow is BLM land out here in Colorado. Um, that's the National Conservation Area. Uh, so the public lands is a fantastic overlay. Where am I? St. Louis, I got one second. There we go. Oh, too far. There we go. There's my, there's my hometown. Uh, so that's why I love the public lands. And I don't like... I don't like seeing it all the time. I just want to be able to reference it real quick. That's why I keep it in there, but I turn it down. Like I said, personal preference. Um, shaded relief. So, anybody here struggle with topographic lines? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I mean, they're not exactly intuitive. Uh, so, shaded relief. Here's what a topographic map looks like just flat. Uh, the closer the lines are together, the steeper the slope, the farther apart they are, the less gradual the slope, 
Um, you can see this, steep lines, steep lines. This is a little plateau up here with some steep bluffs and stuff all around it. I found the shaded relief overlay, and I just turned, here's what it looks like. You can, uh, you can tell it helped out if you're pretty clear there. But if you put it on top of your main layers here, like on top of your UFSS UFSS Classic, and just turn that down to about 20, 25%. See the difference there? And it just it just makes the topography pop. And if I'm out in an area, I want to know if I've got some super steep descent coming up or you know, if there's a bluff line somewhere. Um, and so by having that shader relief turned on just a little bit, it really makes that topography pop in a level. So is it all about where you organize your layers as they go from top to bottom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see. That's, that's a good question. So let me move um, if, let me move the MVM overlay like below UFS class. Right. It's gone. That there was MVM rows over here. Let me put it back. There they are. Yeah. Um, UFS. If I move the UFSS Classic here below Guy Topo, boom. Now I'm using Guy Topo. Um, so it's really critical how you look, how you stack your layers. Yeah, I get messages all the time from people saying, "I've got the premium subscription. I've turned on the MDM overlay, yes, but I can't yes. see it." And my first question is, "Where is it in your layers?" Because if it's under anything, you won't find it. Um, so it's very critical how you layer things. And what's great is, you know, when you're on the trail, um, I can take USFS Classic, and if I want to see something on Guy Topo real quick. I can just turn the opacity down. And now I'm looking at Guy Topo. Uh, and then I can turn it back up. Uh, one thing about Guy Topo, it likes to be, for all of it, for all the info it has, let me find some, let me find one here. Um, okay, so this Allen Cove Natural Bridge area. I can click on it. And this is, a, if you've never been to Alpha Cove, if you're in the area, it's a sweet little natural bridge. It's got some waterfalls back in there. It's pretty cool. All right, this one doesn't have, for some of them, especially if you're out in more popular areas, um, let's see if they've got where to point. It's one of the most popular places, surely. No information on it. Okay. But you can click on some of these, and it'll give you detailed information. A lot of these are campsite, hiking trails, points of interest type things. Uh, but if I move USFS Classic on top of it and then turn down the opacity, it doesn't acknowledge that I'm clicking on the guy, the guy atop of layer. Because the USFS Classic is still there, I just got the visibility turned down. So I can click on this and it's only showing me National Forest because that's actually what I'm looking at here. Um, Real quickly, and then I'm going to get into the other things because I want to make sure there's time for questions. Um, here, these little gray squares, <coughs> the white here, that's all private land. So you can know, and a lot of trails go through private property, like this trail right here technically starts on private property. Uh, but I just like to know, just in case I'm going through someone's, yeah, someone else owns this. This isn't just public land. Yeah. Just in case I need them. Will those reference GIS or do you have to look up the GIS to see what you um, That's where the private land overlay comes in. I don't have it loaded. Um, but if you're doing research and want to know who owns the land, yeah, the private land overlay will tell you who owns it. Sometimes it'll give you their phone number uh, and they'll give you their address, which I think is kind of creepy. But uh, that, they get that from each other's office. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all public knowledge. Um, okay, that's layers. Let me go into real quickly how to how to do a route. And then I'm gonna go up here to Mark Twain over here. There we go. So if I want to explore this area right here, we are southeast of. Let's see, here we are in Springfield, so we're southeast of there, in this little section of the Mark Twain National Forest. Um, so. All I'm going to, let's say I want to start, where's my all starting point? Since over here 
Is that glade top area? I don't, I don't know exactly where glade top is. I think so. All right, so we're going to we're gonna say, all right, we're going on a little trip to the Mark Twain. Everybody, let's meet up in Bradleyville at 10 a.m. And I'm going to click over here, create route. And I'm going to go Mark Twain. I can change the color if I want to. I don't want to put sign to me. And we're going to start right here. And if you have, I've done this before without, if you have internet access, um, you go, let's see, very, very critical. Down here, routing mode. You'll see that right there? It, de it defaults to the top one, which is hiking. Change that to driving. And so we're going to click on this highway, and it's going to automatically route on the road. I love that. Fantastic. I love that. It does not do that if you don't have internet access. So if you don't have internet access, you're just clicking a bunch of straight lines. So I'm going to go there. And then we're going to take off here on these forest roads that are marked. Let's see if that clicks. Oh, it is. And then we're going to go over here. <laughs> Bingo is working. Then we're going to go down here. And the typography in this area just looks interesting. A lot of downhill, a lot of descents. This is cool. Some streams and stuff. So let's go check this out. Um, okay. This is a lesser trail, apparently. It's not on some of the main maps, so that's why it's just drawing a straight line. So I'm going to do that and drag it up there. Now I'm just going to start loosely making yeah, straight lines. Uh, and so we're going to come down here, and go all the way back up here, and we're going to loop back up here, and come over back over here. And now it's drawing the lines again, and then we're going to come down here, and then this looks like it's just the main gravel county road. And we're going to come and we're going to end here in long run. We're going to end in long run. So, boom, there's my route route pass. And then I'm going to come over here and click save. Here's where I can toggle if I want to make it public or not. Um, here's where I can, I can create it and then all of a sudden turn it off, which I think is up here. Uh, here's all the information. I've got almost 4,000 feet of descent, 3,800 feet of descent, max elevation, max elevation of 1,400 feet. And minimum would be 21. So, and then I can click save. And boom. Once I've done that, here's where I can, if then I want to share that with my friends that are going on this trip with me, I can export that as a GPX or a KML or a GeoJSON, which I don't know what that is, uh, and then download it and send it to my friends. What's the difference between the GPX and the KML? I also have no idea. GPX is more recognized through uh, like ARC and uh, the bigger, more powerful uh, GIS uh, maps. Uh, KML is Google only. And JSON is, uh, again, with the other bigger map makers like ARC and that, but it is like grass GIS, which is a freeway. Okay, we are running out of time here. So let me show you map downloads. Hold on, we have one more question. Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, I notice when I'm making routes, sometimes if my route is a little long, it'll try to shortcut my route. Is there a way to turn that off or won't um, do that? No, you, that happens to me too. If it's doing that auto routing thing, it will click what it thinks is the best way to get there. And so if there's like, say you're taking a trail from one main gravel road to the another part of that main gravel road, and you go from here to here, or maybe at the end of that short trail, guy will automatically go, Oh, well, this is the best way to get there. Right. And so you just have to start clicking smaller chunks of this one to make it go where you want to go. So uh, you, you also create that trip, or, or uh, you're just like, oh, you did, but you just have to have cell service or to create that before you get offline or have to do that before you leave your house. For the auto routing thing, you need cell, you need internet access. So as long as you're hot and you're not just you can, nowhere. As like, as cell say you're sitting around a camp. Route. Say you're sitting at camp and you don't have cell signal and you didn't pre-plan before you left the house, you can still pre-plan. You're just not going to get that auto routing feature. So you're going to have to just click straight lines. Top of the hill and get cell service and it might download it? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if you're offline and you're creating a route, you just have to click the straight lines gotcha. and build it that way, which is, I mean, it works. Uh, let's talk about downloading maps real quick. So what you're going to get when you download is whatever you have active in your active layers tab. You can say I don't have Mapbox streaks over here. Uh, so whatever is active, 
That's what it's going to download. Whether the visibility is turned on or off or not, it doesn't matter. It's just what's in your active area. So if you want self coverage when you're away, you've got to move that up in here. And once it's downloaded, you can still change the order of your layers, but it's not going to download if it's not active. So I'm going to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the plus sign, and I'm going to go, oh, wait, I'm not connected to my hotspot here. Let me do that. Um, where is it? There it is. Um, turn, on, turn airplane mode off. Hotspot joins. If you ever like to use your hotspot, just please do. Hello? Okay. Are we not, we're connected to the hotspot now. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go to plus. I'm going to hit download maps. Tell Taylor to go away. Uh, I'm going to hit download maps. And we'll, I'm going to get out of this section. Because these, these areas I already have. So I'm going to go up here to the Mark Twain National Forest. And do this area that I've already got to tell. So what Guy will do is you just drag out what you want. And so... The key information, you see, I can get this whole massive chunk here if I want. And what Gaia up here, here's where Gaia has a limit on 100,000 tiles. So once you go over 100,000 tiles, it turns red. That's its limit. So you've got to keep your chunks below 100,000 tiles. And that's going to depend on what layers you've got in there. So like if I had satellite imagery in here, I would get a lot smaller area that I can download. But for me, being in Arkansas, I can download the entire Ozark National Forest in one chunk. I can download, can't get all of the Washington House because they're a little bit bigger. I can get those in two chunks. Um, going out in Colorado, yeah, I, I, it only takes me like three chunks to get what I need out there. But, but again, that's if you don't have satellite collecting, you're just trying to get so much detail. Right. Then, and that's why I don't put satellite imagery on my, my mobile devices because it just takes up so much. And you can see here in the corner, it's telling me how many tiles, it's telling me the file size. So if I download this whole chunk right here, it's going to be almost three gigabytes of storage on my device. Uh, so depending on the phone you have or the tablet you have and how much storage you have, that's going to determine if you have the space or not. I mean, with the modern phones, I mean, I've got a basic iPhone 11 that's got 256 gigs of storage. I can download the entire country if I want to, probably, uh, for all the national forests, and I have never hit the limit on my phone. I hit the limit recording videos, but not downloading maps. Um, so that's real quickly how you do it. Once you've got the area selected, uh, you go right down here. In the corner, you hit save. You can name it. Name your maps. Because huh. otherwise, you just get a date and kind of a general area where it is. And you can put it in folders. I'm not going to hit save because I don't want to actually download it. But <clears throat> then it will start downloading each layer. And over here in the corner, you can see that little thing spinning. Did I hit save? Okay. No, uh, it's still trying to download something. Um, but you'll have this download status over here. Um, that's real quickly how to download maps. It's super simple, and it all depends on what layers you have active. We've got just like five minutes left. So I want to, where's my sign sheet? All right. Any questions, real quick? Matt, once you create your route and save it, do you have to download it over to your tablet? It'll automatically sync. As long as you have internet access, it will sync. It will sync. Um, any, any other questions, real quick? And let's give some stuff away. No? Okay.